most important bridge that we will ever build is not one that connects two points in space, but rather two points in time. Every day we're building this bridge together, connecting our present to our future. But unlike most bridges, we can always change where this one leads. As an astronomer, I've often wondered if there are other civilizations out there, somewhere in the cosmos, other species like ours, building their own bridges to their futures like we are today. There definitely should be. Our universe is a big enough place. In our cosmic neighborhood alone, there should be trillions of other worlds, around hundreds of billions of other suns, other stars. Many of these alien solar systems should be younger than our shore, but many still should be older. There should be other civilizations out there, ahead of ours, ones that have already built the same bridges for themselves that we are building for ourselves now. But here's the question that keeps me up at night. What if we never find them? What if we never find any evidence that there are civilizations out there ahead of us, ones who have already crossed these bridges to their futures, same as we're trying to cross ours now? What does that tell us about the path that we're on? This path on this bridge that we're building behind us is already set by our history. But moving forward, our path, this bridge, is paved by the choices we make every day and the things that we value. An essential measure of this is our use of energy. We need energy to do whatever it is we want to do, both as individuals and collectively as a species. It's at the center of everything in our lives. It's at the center of everything that we see all around us now, responsible for or a product of everything, from growing our food and transporting it around the globe to growing our population and transporting that around the globe, from running our economy day to day to developing the technology that we take for granted all around us now. Our access and our use of energy defines the tempo of our daily lives and the things that we value in ways that we only rarely think about. Since the 1800s or so, we've been using roughly 2.6% more energy per year than the years before. Now, this may not seem like much, but overall, this catches up to you. Over time, we're using more and more energy, faster and faster. So now, here we are in the present day, using somewhere between 15 and 20 trillion watts of power to fuel our ambitions. Enough for our presence to be seen from space. That's a lot. But if we keep going down this bridge that we're building, using more and more energy with each passing year, in just a few human lifetimes, we'll have to use a thousand times more energy than we're using now. Imagine that. By then, how we obtain energy, our, the ways that we can use it, our additional resources will be somewhat limited. There will only be one game in town left, and that's the giant star-sized nuclear reactor, the sun, sitting right in the middle of our solar system, giving off much, much, much more free energy, free power in all directions, without any effort from us. If we want to keep going down this bridge, as we have been, we're going to have to harness that energy. There's one good way to do that, too. Here's the sun from a distance now. Now, I want you to think of a solar panel or something similar. Okay? Now imagine a whole swarm of solar panels surrounding the sun, a swarm that collects, absorbs the sun's light, and turns it into energy that we can use. Such a swarm of solar collectors would ideally be about the size of the Earth's orbit around the sun. The astronomer Freeman Dyson is considered the first to think of this, so we, appropriately enough, call it the Dyson Swarm. Now, I, I know this idea sounds fantastic, but believe it or not, building such a thing is technically feasible. And that's good, because again, this is our bridge, this is where it's pointing, this is where our insatiable hunger for energy is leading us now. Now think, if there are other civilizations that have already crossed this bridge into their own futures, then that means there should be Dyson swarms somewhere out there in the universe right now. We just have to find them. Uh, the trick is, you know, knowing how to look. Because Dyson swarms are, are big, right? Sure, but 
the space between stars is much, much bigger than that. Dice and swarms are so far away, stars are so far away, that we wouldn't be able to pick them out individually or see them directly. Luckily, we don't have to. We can get creative. You see, regardless of what a civilization would choose to do with all of its energy, it's got to obey the laws of physics. These rules that are sewn into the very fabric of the cosmos around us tell us that energy can't be created or destroyed. I've been saying this whole time, we use energy, but really what I mean is that we transform energy from one type to another to another, and through all these transformations, we get something useful for us in the process. And you're familiar with this in your daily lives, too. And we, we take energy, and we use that energy to produce food and generate electricity. You take food, you eat that food, and you turn that energy into energy of motion and energy of thought. Meanwhile, all the devices around us right now take energy from electricity and turn that into energy of heating, cooling, lighting, powering our journeys through the internet. Through all the transformations of energy, through all the transformations that we put our energy through, it invariably gets released as heat. Just walk into an unair conditioned room full of sweaty people and technology and you'll kind of get what I mean. Over time, the energy that we use gets released into our environment and finds its way out into a space. Other civilizations, beholden to the same laws of physics that we are, would be no different. Civilizations with a Dyson Swarm would be no different. They just use a lot of energy from a star. But they would have to take that star's worth of energy and regardless of what transformations they put that energy through, they would have to release that energy out as heat too. So a Dyson Swarm should be warm and glow with the heat that it gives off. A special kind of light that we call infrared radiation. Light that's redder than red. Now, a few years ago, I joined a search, a hunt, for Dyson swarms with some other astronomers. We knew that space telescopes like WISE, Spitzer, and IRAF had already surveyed the whole sky specifically in infrared light. We knew that these surveys could be used to hunt for Dyson swarms too. So we looked. We scanned the whole infrared sky, hunting for distant points of light that had just the right kinds and balance of infrared light, what you'd expect the tell telltale signatures of a Dyson swarm around another sun. But even though the data were good enough to spot them, the data were good enough, even in a sky of billions of stars and other objects, not one was a Dyson swarm. Our search found nothing. There's no evidence that there are advanced civilizations out there using significant amounts of energy, the kind of energy that we're going to need just to keep going down this bridge that we're building now. So again, I ask you, if no one else could cross this bridge, what does this tell us about the path that we're on? This question haunted me for the last few years, so I decided to do some more research and look into this further. It seems that the search for extraterrestrial intelligence implicitly assumes that more is always synonymous with progress, right? That more advanced civilizations use more energy, just like our path up until now would suggest. But what if that's just not true? What if there's a bottleneck somewhere and we just don't see it? Where could it be? And all the while I was asking myself these questions, I couldn't help but notice the backdrop of the 21st century all around us. Increased frequency of deadly storms, wildfires, droughts, floods, rising temperatures, all mark the impacts we're having on our planet through climate change. And all of this is also because of how we use our energy. The fossil fuels that we burn now release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, and these trap heat around the surface of the Earth like a blanket. We're using a lot of energy now, sure, yeah, that's true, but we're not using enough to directly heat the planet all that much. 
rather as a side effect, we trap more of the heat that's already here. And that's, that's good, actually, believe it or not. That's a good thing because th that makes this a solvable problem. We could just not use fossil fuels. We could not release greenhouse gases. It's a challenge, certainly, but I think it's one we can solve, and we're working on it right now. But remember that bridge and where it leads. Just a few human lifetimes. We'll have to use a thousand times more energy than we're using now. And that magnitude of energy use will have significant consequences. Much like a glowing Dyson swarm, using that much energy will be enough to heat the Earth directly based on the laws of physics alone. There's no getting around the laws of physics. We could try to be clever, or we could try to be creative, and I've looked into the options, believe me, but it doesn't change the bottom line. And here it is. If we keep building this bridge, as we have done, if we keep using more and more energy every year, our energy use will render the planet uninhabitable by the end of the 24th century, if not sooner. The bridge is dangerous. Our thirst for energy, for more, has consequences. We're starting to register those consequences now with the climate that we're currently changing. And if we keep going down this bridge, these consequences will only be worse. Other researchers in this overlapping field that I'm in of astronomy, biology, planetary science, climate science, and more, what we're calling astrobiology, are all reaching similar conclusions. Research is now showing that unless civilizations are careful as they're developing, if they use too much, if they consume too many resources or grow too quickly, that they can inflict terrible damage on their planetary environments. Developing civilizations like ours, unless we're careful, can destroy themselves by damaging their planetary cradles even before they get all that far into the cosmos. Or to put it another way, astrobiology and the search for extraterrestrial intelligence may be telling us that our bridge is unsustainable. Now, I won't pretend like this is the only possible solution for why we seem to be so alone out there, but even if we are alone, or we are the first civilization in this unimaginably vast cosmos, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change the path that we're on. It doesn't change the laws of physics. If anything, it only raises the stakes even higher and makes the choices that we make now even more important. So what choices can we make? With this knowledge, how can we build a better bridge? A bridge to our best possible future. Remember, it all comes back to energy, right? We give that bridge direction every day with how we use energy to live our lives. Everything comes down to energy. Everything we do, our growing population, our transportation, how we work, how we live, what we work and what we live for, our economic priorities, our consumer habits, everything that we do gives direction to our bridge. I've just shown you a rough idea of where this bridge is heading now based on this paradigm that we live in that only rarely question or think about. But that's the great news. Because the future is not set. We can question this paradigm. We can make better choices. We can build a better bridge, a bridge to our best possible future. Easing our effects on our climate now is a clear step one. From there, we're going to need to take a hard look at our growth in energy use and everything that contributes to it. Now, it's easy for me to come up here and dream about a perfect world with a stable population that cherishes and takes careful stewardship of the Earth, its resources, and its ecosystem. But that's going to require a population that really values those things over other things that our economy is set up to value now. Things like the latest smartphone, 
free shipping. An endless panoply of consumer products that are always made to break and never meant to last. And <laughs> the underlying economic reality of it all, maximizing shareholder value for the latest fiscal quarter. We all need to take a hard look at our past, our priorities, and the things that we value. Personally, as an astronomer, I've always dreamed of the day our species leaves the planetary cradle for the cosmos. And I believe we can get there. I believe that can be our future or any other future that we choose. But what I've learned is we can only get there if we take care of ourselves and the planet in the process. We can't unthinkingly slouch into our future, or let the future happen to us. No, we need to choose our future. We need to make our choices, understand our priorities, and understand the consequences that go with them. Our ultimate responsibility is to plan for our future, not just ours, not just our children's or our grandchildren's future, but humanity's future, together, on Earth, even if we reach for the stars. So, where will our, bri our bridge lead us now? That choice is up to you. Thank you.